Hello everyone. Let us start with the second session, part two of chapter one, cell as a unit of health and disease. Now I am going to start with cellular activation. So yesterday, yesterday, what all we have discussed? We have discussed about cell. We have discussed about various cell organelles. We have also discussed about various genetic mechanisms and two important concepts we have discussed number one copy number variation and single nucleotide polymorphism number two is long non-coding RNA LNC I am writing long non-coding RNA and miRNA I hope things are very clear for you let me revise it again long non-coding RNA we have XIST miRNA they are nothing else but called as um, what SIRNA that is silencing RNA I told you about RISC RNA induced silencing complex okay yes and this is what we call it as a technology we are using that is what we call it as knockdown technology knockdown technology so these are the various things important things okay and remember uh, again CNV and this both are R2 potential short not questions you may get in your exams from this chapter okay today let us talk about cell signaling pathway you know if a protein has to be synthesized or if some function a cell has to perform there should be some signals am i right for example for example you know about facts you know about facts here we are typing something it will be converted into electrical signals further this electrical signals will be converted back into the output message and that will be reached in the other uh, to the person who is sitting in some corner of the world similarly in order for a cell to do some functions it has some signaling mechanisms already you have studied about some signaling pathways last year one is called as paracrine signaling what do you mean by paracrine signaling paracrine means adjacent cells okay that means here one cell is present this cell will activate the very adjacent cell this is called as paracrine signaling what is autocrine signaling same cell synaptic signaling you know neurons you know your neuromuscular junction everything and what do you mean by endocrine signaling for example thyroid hormone will be produced by thyroid gland you know the location of thyroid gland but this hormone is going to act at some other parts of the body which is at a very um, what uh, huge distance am I right yes so that is what we call it as endocrine signaling I hope things are very clear for you yes for whatever be the type of signaling there should be some receptors there should be some receptors am I right yes okay and this receptors there should be some substrates the substrate we call it as ligand and the receptors okay of course the same name receptors only okay yes now these receptors may be either two types it may be intracellular or it may be extracellular receptors intracellular receptors or extracellular receptors extracellular receptors are also called as cell surface receptors okay cell surface receptors fine so intracellular receptors already last year in endocrine physiology you would have told there are some hormones there are some compounds which will act by binding to the receptors which are present within the uh, cytoplasm or within the nucleus for example for example vitamin d steroid hormones okay we call those things as nuclear receptors i hope you uh, can recollect these names from your physiology they are called as nuclear receptors and there are some other receptors called as cell surface uh, receptors number one is what we call it as the ion channels okay number two is what we call it as gpcr that is g protein coupled receptors then uh, okay yes okay all these are some of the what cell surface receptors all these are some of the cell surface receptors so remember whenever uh, these receptors will bind with the substrates what will happen some signaling pathway will be activated within the cell 
okay and we have lot of signaling pathways okay for example i am telling a is a substrate b is the receptor when a bind with b okay uh, just imagine this is the plasma membrane of the cell okay okay just remember this is the plasma membrane of the cell i am writing as pm okay yes and next what is happening next what is happening when this a uh, substrate bind with the receptor there will be activation of there will be activation of some what pathways within the cell okay we have lot of pathways okay all these pathways in detail we will study in each of the cancer pathology everything we will learn number one uh, just some examples one is called as hedgehog hedgehog pathway number one is what we call it as uh, beta wnt pathway and we have something called as notch pathway n o t c h notch pathway these are some of the cell signaling pathway okay i'm just going to highlight it here also fine notch wnt and hedgehog pathway okay now we are going to so now we have discussed about the receptors now we are going to see about this pathway see as you can see in this picture we have lot of receptor we have tyrosine kinase receptor or non receptor tyrosine kinase okay we have gpcr we have some nuclear receptors okay we see it is going to attach within the cell okay we have notch okay we have frizzled we have wnt all these are various receptors there is no need that you have to mug up each and every name of these receptors okay just two or three common receptors just remember the name because in detail in the coming chapters each of these pathways each of these receptors what is its importance everything we will see let us focus on this picture okay i told you, you know there are some cell signaling pathway here in this picture they have explained with the help of an example okay see there is a growth factor the growth factor will bind with the growth factor receptor growth factor is a substrate growth factor receptor binding okay yes so as a result of binding what will be happening phosphorylation takes place okay and as a result of this binding there is something see rest all what i am going to tell the name what all you are seeing no all these are nothing else but the cell signaling molecules okay they are the signals for each signal we have given some names okay and whenever there is a problem in the signals we will see that okay this disease occurs okay and this disease um, uh, happens because of the problem in this signaling molecule so in order for that easiness okay in order for that uh, what things to get understand very easily we have given them some names that's all don't uh, get panic by seeing all these names of course you should remember this pathway you should uh, know the all these names there is no other way okay so we, we will see so as a result of this uh, receptor binding uh, okay what will happen phosphorylation takes place phosphorylation phosphorylation you know no a phosphorylation what it is happening uh, it is going to convert inactive ras to active ras what is ras r a s it is nothing else but a signaling molecule signaling molecule so inactive ras become active ras when the growth receptor what and the substrate binds with each other as a result what will be happening as a result what will be happening this active result okay uh, yeah, and and you know there is some energy all these are energy consuming molecules gtp will become gdp and at the same time the active ras it has two fate it can activate some other signaling molecules also some other signaling molecule also what are they pi3k pi3k in return uh, it will activate akt and then it will activate mtor out of that all these you know you should know the expansion of all these things okay and uh, let me say the example of um, sorry the expansion of each of the, all of these uh, factors okay yes let me tell uh, each of them one sec uh, one by one fine okay so pi3k means phosphatidyl uh, inositol 3 kinase okay yes okay only important things i am mentioning this i have told you what do you mean by mtor mammalian mammalian target of rapamycin rapamycin what is rapamycin it is an antibiotic okay see just you should know the expansion okay then mapk mitogen mitogen activated protein kinase okay and finally this will affect mic myc what is that myc what is myc i will tell now and finally it will cause us cell cycle progression okay i hope you don't understand anything okay no problem i am going to explain it once again fine yes okay let us take a fresh page here i am going to explain it listen very carefully see okay 
growth receptor substrate binding this is the plasma membrane what happens binding happen phosphorylation takes place inactive ras what is ras it is a signaling molecule get converted into active ras okay fine this occurs with the conversion of gtp to gdp it is an energy consuming reaction this active ras active ras can have two fate can have two fate okay this active ras is going to have two fate that means it will activate two pathways simultaneously that is the meaning okay number 1 pi3k which further activates akt which further activate mtor here it activates raf which activates mapk both in turn both in turn will activate mic what is mic it is actually a transcription transcription regulator we have one more transcription regulator that when the time comes i will tell you so this is one of the transcription regulator okay yes and this transcription regulator further helps in cell cycle progression cell cycle progression i hope it is very clear for you okay so this is one of the many we are going to learn uh, what uh, like this around i think uh, 20 to 40 pathways are there for various cancer pathologies we are going to see all this pathway this is one such pathway and remember this pathway is mainly most commonly involved or it is uh, uh, involved in the thyroid malignancies okay thyroid malignancies okay yes see what do you mean by malignancy tumor whenever we use the word tumor tumor may be either a benign tumor and a malignant tumor okay malignancy means it is actually the pakka you know what we call it as a cancer no cancer means actually it is malignancy okay yes so yeah so for thyroid tumors or for, for thyroid uh, malignancies okay this is the pathway this is actually okay when we when it comes in the thyroid cancer chapter again i will almost discuss the similar pathway so actually in thyroid malignancy there will be problem there will be some problems uh, here okay there may be problem in rif there may be problem in mipk there may be a problem in mtor whenever the problem in this cell signaling pathways what will happen what will happen the signals won't reach the yes destination properly if the signals doesn't reach the uh, what um, uh, destination properly what, what will happen we can't communicate am i right i am talking to one of my friend who is uh, uh, sitting in america if i am not uh, conveying the proper information how he will know am i right what will happen problems arises problems arises yes here also the problems arises among the cells and that is how the cancer develops so the problem is the what is the basic problem behind the cancer the problem is here in the cell signaling pathway or the cell transcription pathway this is one of the example this is one of the example you should remember this pathway you should remember this pathway okay cell signaling pathways can be asked as a short not question okay in that you are going to write okay in that you are going to mention okay what are the uh, paracrine autocrine okay that you are going to mention then you are going to uh, explain about the intracellular and extracellular receptor then you are going to draw just this diagram okay you're going to draw just this diagram once you draw this diagram itself okay and you know unlike in first year and all there is no need that you should write things in pages and pages concept is important if you write this if you present this that is more than enough fine yes okay so that finishes the pathway so this is one of the example one of the many examples of the cell signaling pathway one of the many examples of the cell signaling pathway okay yes so once this is done let us see about what are the, so this is one such receptor we have discussed about the growth receptor similarly we have another types of receptor one is called as receptors which have some kinase activity kinase means phosphor okay you know kinase means what hmm? phosphorylation am i right yes 
Phosphatase is what? Dephosphorylation. These are all terminologies you have already came across in your biochemistry in various cycles. You know, we will use uh, what kinase, okay? And we will use phosphatase, okay? Yes, like that. So, receptors associated with kinase activity and receptors which are associated with, or which do not have the kinase activities, okay? So, next we are going to discuss the various other receptors. Okay, now so far we have discussed uh, this example with the growth factor receptor. Now, what are the other receptors? Receptors associated with some uh, what kinase activity okay just remember that and next one is examples yes here comes the questions so what are the receptors which have some tyrosine kinase activity that is rtk whenever you heard the word rtk immediately you should understand it is receptor tyrosine kinase examples insulin receptor already you would have studied in biochemistry then two more addition epidermal growth factor and platelet derived growth factor epidermal growth factor and platelet derived growth factor no worries okay finally i will give you a gist okay let us uh, i'm going to draw a table here i'm going to draw a table here yes i'm going to draw a table here okay One second, yes, let me draw a table here. Yes, I'm going to draw a big box, and within this big box, I'm going to write okay. What is the first receptor we have told you? RTK receptor tyrosine kinase. What are the examples of receptor tyrosine kinase? Yes, okay, let us put a small heading also here receptors, receptors with examples. Number one, receptor tyrosine kinase. What are the examples? Insulin, platelet derived growth factor receptor PDGFR, then epidermal growth factor re receptor EGFR. You should know the abbreviation. These are standard abbreviations. Okay, fine. Yes. Okay. After that, let us go through the second receptor. So that is the first receptor we have discussed. Okay. Then next one is called as what the receptors which do not have tyrosine kinase activity they are also called as they are also called as non receptor tyrosine kinase what are the examples of non receptor tyrosine kinase we have a receptor which is present in the rose sarcoma virus okay rose sarcoma virus and that we call it as yes or c okay this receptor is present in the rose sarcoma virus for example in covid 19 we have a protein called a spike protein similarly in rose sarcoma virus this is a protein we call it as src okay and we have a lot of receptors like src 1 2 3 4 okay sh 1 2 3 4 like that so the entire receptors you know we call it as src family kinase or src homology that is sh sh means src homology src family kinase it is a family of proteins which are present in the rose sarcoma virus okay let me mention it here let, can we draw it uh, write it here yes what is the second thing this is called as non receptor tyrosine kinase tk just i am writing src that is rose sarcoma family okay rose sarcoma family of proteins okay yes once that is done, then we have the third class, we call it as GPCR, G protein coupled receptors. You will uh, study this GPCR in detail in pharmacology, okay, in pharmacology. And just remember one thing, just remember one thing, they are called as serpentine receptor. Serpentine means what? Seven transmembrane. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So they looks like a snake. That is why it is called a serpentine receptors. So the proteins will go like this, okay, in various fashions from one side and it reaches uh, finally it leaves through the other side. So that is why it is called as a serpentine receptor. It has seven membranes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So totally seven uh, membranes are there. That is why it is called as what? Serpentine receptors or uh, transmembrane receptors. Again, I'm going to write it here okay just for your final revision okay yes what is it number three 
Number three is what we call it as GPCR. I am just writing it. One is called as serpentine receptors. They are serpentine receptors. The number four, nuclear receptors. I have told you what are the examples of nuclear receptors. Yes, vitamin D. Yes, very good. Steroids. Okay, all these are examples of uh, the nuclear receptors. Fine. Yes. Once that is done. Once that is done. Uh, what are the other type of other classes of receptors? We, okay, we call it as receptors of the notch family, receptors of WNT or frizzled family receptors. Okay, yes, just remember this name notch, frizzled, all these are the various signaling pathway. All these, you know, we will uh, WNT pathway, uh, all these pathways. Uh, once again, we will discuss uh, individually in the subsequent chapters. Just remember, we have all these are receptors names. Okay, fine. Yes, once this is done. Let us see about the transcription factors. Let us see about the transcription factors. I already told you know MYC MYC. MYC is a transcription factor. Remember in the entire human genome there are two transcription factors. There are two transcription factors which regulate the expression of genes which are needed for growth and these two transcription factors name you should remember they are MYC and another one is called as JUN, J-U-N. These are the names of two transcription factors. Okay, it are both are very important MCQ questions. Okay, yes, what are they? MIC and JUN. MIC and JUN, they are the two transcription factors which regulate the expression of genes which are needed for growth. Okay, I hope this is very clear for you. Yes, so that is the only two important points you should remember in this transcription factors. Once this is done, we will see about what are the growth factors. Now I have told you, you know, we have the growth factor, we have epidermal growth factor, platelet derived growth factor, all those stuffs I have told you, you know. Yes, now we are going to see each of those factor in detail. Okay, of course, not that much in detail because again, no, these topics I told you, uh, each receptor has uh, some importance. Okay, each receptor is going to, whenever there is a mutation in each of this receptor it is going to cause some cancer so it is going to produce some diseases so in each of that respective diseases we will take these receptors again but you should know okay you should know what are some of the common salient features of these receptors out of that transforming growth factor receptor or tgf beta we call it as it is a potential short mark question so you should know some basic points okay not in detail some basic points you should know about these receptors fine yes so Yes, first focus on the table. I told you know in Robbins you have to focus on two things. One is images, number two is tables. With this itself, you can write everything. Yes. Already in my Instagram page, in my Instagram page, I have conducted a very what like a 30 second reel. Okay, on this growth factors. Once you listen this, please go through that Instagram reel. Very easily you can remember all these receptors. It's very easy. Fine. Okay, what are the growth factor receptor? Number one is called as epidermal growth factor. Epidermal growth factor. Epidermal means it is mainly present from keratinocytes. Of course, a lot of names are given, macrophages, but you are going to remember just which has the abundant. Okay, this is present mainly in where? Epidermal. So, what will be its function? It stimulates keratinocytes. Simple. TGF alpha, TGF beta. Let us see both of these together. TGF alpha is present in macrophages. It stimulates proliferation of hepatocytes. Very, very important. Liver, you know, liver, liver has an ability to regenerate. The regeneration of liver, the regeneration of liver is because of this TGF alpha. TGF alpha helps in hepatocyte proliferation. Fine? Yes. Then coming into TGF beta. TGF beta is produced by macrophages, platelet, T lymphocyte, fibroblast, smooth muscle cells. So, what are they? Lymphocytes. So, they mainly help in chemotaxis. You know what is chemotaxis? Already you have studied in what blood and immunity chapter in physiology. Chemotaxis, they mainly helps in chemotaxis of leukocytes. That finishes TGF alpha, TGF beta. Coming into HGF, that is also called as hepatocyte growth factor. The other name of hepatocyte growth factor is scatter factor. Scatter factor. What is scatter factor? Hepatocyte growth factor is also called as scatter factor. It's an MCQ question. It is mainly hepatocyte. In the name itself, it is there. So, where it will be present? It will be present in the liver stroma. What is the same fun function? Is same as that of TGF alpha. It enhances proliferation of stipulates. So, it enhances 
the TGF alpha stimulate. So, for example, my liver. I am cutting my liver or half of my liver I am giving to some person. First, so you know, liver will have the power of regeneration. TGF alpha will stimulate the proliferation of hepatocyte. Then immediately hepatocyte growth factor will come. Hepatocyte growth factor will what enhance the further proliferation of hepatocyte. So within three to four months, my new the liver get completely formed off. Fine, yes. Then we have VEGF, vascular endothelial growth factor present in the mesenchymal cell. It proliferate. See, as the name indicates, endothelial. It stimulates the proliferation of endothelial cells and it increases vascular permeability. PDGF, platelet derived growth factor present mainly in platelets. Okay, again the role is chemotaxis. Then we have uh, fibroblast growth factor present in macrophages fibroblast so mainly they are stimulating the fibroblast name itself so these are not that much significant then keratinocyte growth factor again again it stimulate the keratinocyte migration here what all things you have to remember number one remember epidermal growth factor number two tgf alpha what its role in liver number three scatter factor is the other name for hepatocyte growth factor Okay, and another number four, TGF, transforming growth factor beta. These are the things you should know. Let us see each of this in detail. First one, EGF, epidermal growth factor and transforming growth factor alpha. We are going to see both of these together. Why? Because both of them belong to a same family called as EGF family. What is that? EGF family. Fine. Yes, EGF receptor family. Already I told you epidermal growth factor receptors have intrinsic tyrosine kinase activity. Fine. Yes. Okay. Here we have two receptors, subtypes. One is called as ERB1. Another one is called as ERB2. Fine. Yes. ERB2 is also called as HER2. HER2. No other way. You have to remember all this. Fine? Yes. Next, now we are going to see, now we are going to see in which cancer we have ERB1 mutation, in which cancer we have ERB2 mutations. ERB1, I am writing here separately for you, ERB1 mutation is seen in lung and head and neck cancers. Head and neck cancers means cancers of oral cavity, all those stuffs. ERB2 also called as HER2. How I used to remember HER. HER means female. Female, what is the cancer? Most common cancer? Breast cancer. Simple. So, ERB2 or HER2 mutation is most commonly seen in breast cancer. Okay. Yes, I hope it is clear for you. Yes. Of course, here head and neck, uh, you can even include brain also. No problem. Fine. Yes. Coming into hepatocyte growth factor, also called as scatter factor. Fine. Main importance, I have already told you, stimulate hepatocyte survival. Fine. It again have intrinsic tyrosine kinase activity. Now I am going to write in which cancers. Hepatocyte growth factor in which cancer. Remember renal cancer. Which cancer? Renal cancer as well as in case of thyroid cancers, thyroid carcinoma, thyroid carcinoma. In thyroid carcinoma, we have a lot of variety, clear cell variant, uh, papillary carcinoma, medullary carcinoma. Out of that, in thyroid, we have papillary carcinoma, we have uh, hepatocyte growth factor alpha, um, uh, hepatocyte growth factor are also called as scatter factor mutations. Scatter factor mutations. Okay, yes. Okay, fine. So that finishes that. Then coming into platelet derived growth factor. In that platelet derived growth factor, okay, we have platelet derived growth factor alpha and we have platelet derived growth factor beta. Just remember, uh, there is no that much uh, significance here. Just remember that they also have some intrinsic tyrosine kinase activity. And remember, they have something to their produced mainly from the platelet. And uh, they again helps in what? Activation of platelets, okay, chemotaxis of the platelets, all those stuffs, okay? Yeah, no cancers we have usually in PDGF. Of course, we have, okay, in some uh, what tumors of the brain, we have PDGFR mutations, but not that much significant now. Coming into VEGF, 
okay what is that vascular endothelial growth factor they are produced from the endothelial cells they increases the vascular permeability i have already told you we have vgf a b c and d we have vgf a b c and d they stimulate what that that is angiogenesis angiogenesis means what formation of new blood vessels yes here comes the question vascular endothelial factors are mainly helps in the formation of new bv bv i am writing bv means blood vessels okay and this is very very important in case of what metastasis of cancer you know breast cancer it will go and reach the ovary how it reaches through blood how it uh, reaches through the blood increased blood supply increased production of new blood vessel that is because of this vgfr that is vascular endothelial growth factor Um, fine yes see it is expressed in highest amount okay in the fenestrated endothelium that is in the kidney pigment epithelium in the retina choroid plexus in the brain all those stuffs okay yes just to remember uh bgf and remember this bgf is produced as a result of an another transcription factor we call it as hif1 that means hypoxia inducible factor i am going to high altitude remember i am going to high altitude high altitude what will happen less oxygen less oxygen will cause hypoxia hypoxia will induce hif1 alpha hif1 alpha will release release bgf vascular endothelial growth factor new blood vessels or capillary sprouting will happens new rbc more and more rbcs will be there this is what you call it as acclimatization yes physiology of high altitude you would have read in uh, gk paul or whatever books you have read okay yes this is actually hif1 alpha fine yes then then just uh, remember just remember what is the importance of this vegf there is a condition there is a condition called as amd age related macular degeneration macula macula is present in eye okay in the retina okay uh, this is uh, we have two things called as fovea and macula so uh, in uh, what happens due to increased vascularization more blood vessels will happens okay in the red form will be formed in the retina this will finally occlude the vision and the patient may finally go blind okay end up in getting blindness becoming blind so what we are having we are giving bgf antibodies anti bgf antibody so what this antibodies will do this antibodies will go and inhibit the bgf it will decreases the formation of blood vessels so the blood vessels which are formed will die and the, there won't be any formation of new blood vessel so it will improve the vision it will improve the vision that is actually called as anti bgf antibody it's used in case of uh, what age related macular degeneration then fibroblast growth factor nothing more important than transforming growth factor beta yes see in transforming growth factor beta uh, of course it is uh, yes i have told you about uh, its importance and the most important point you have to remember in tgf is tgf is it is going to it is going to see suppose you fell down you fell down you get an injury after some period of time they, there will be a scar formation actually that scar formation is aided by tgf beta in third chapter inflammation and scar formation chapter 3 we will read, uh, read this again tgf beta it will aid or it will stimulate or it will what enhance the scar formation it will enhance the scar formation okay that is very very important it is not only is just going to be you see in robins you will see lot of english literature high five words you will see pleiotropic with the benzenes that means tgf beta why will be pleiotropic pleiotropic means many effect yes tgf beta has a lot and lot of effect okay so i have just mentioned the most important effect it is going to drive the scar formation how it is going to enhance the scar formation here they have given a word it should decrease matrix metalloproteinase activity okay don't worry as of now we will see chapter 3 inflammation i will say what is matrix metalloproteinase activities all those steps just remember tgf beta increases scar formation fine yes once that is done we are going to see the extracellular matrix extracellular matrix again already last year topic only and here we are going to see the basement membrane okay and remember just one point in that what is the type of collagen in basement membrane in basement membrane we have type 4 collagen type 4 collagen just remember that name no nothing more okay we have lot of uh, you know collagen type 1 type 2 yes just to go through all those steps already um, we will see and again we will see in genetics chapter what are the diseases which occurs because of the problem of collagen elastin okay then proteoglycans hyaluronic acid all those steps again uh, it's uh, important 
and already you have read in your biochemistry and here comes the question here comes the question what is laminin what is laminin laminin is the most abundant glycoprotein in the basement membrane it is an mcq question what is the most abundant uh, glycoprotein in the uh, what uh, glycoprotein in most abundant glycoprotein uh, in the basement membrane we call it as okay yes okay most abundant glycoprotein in the basement membrane is nothing else but our uh, laminin okay is laminin okay just remember that point it is an mcq question fine okay once that is done we will see the cell cycle okay again again cell cycle again cell cycle you would have studied we have g1 phase s phase g2 phase and a very quiescent phase or a dormant phase we call it as g0 phase fine yes let us see in this with single picture we are going to see chromosome duplication occurs in s phase we have g2 then m g1 okay yes see what i am going to focus here between each phases there is a checkpoint there is a checkpoint checkpoint means the cells at that point the cell cycle will stop it, it won't stop actually in reality but for your understanding i am telling so now the, for example on cell one cell in my human body is in g1 phase it is going to next phase s phase between g1 and s there is a g1 bar s checkpoint it is actually the checkpoint for check for why it is called checkpoint it check for any damages in the dna for example if a patient have cystic fibrosis there is a problem in cftr gene that cell is going to duplicate that going that is the uh, ultimate aim of the cell cycle no to produce new cell so what is happening this cell with mutation or mutated dna enter the g1 phase now what is next what is the next phase yes phase but before going to the s phase the cell should stop whether my d it should check itself oh yes i am okay or no i am not okay fine so no my dna is mutated i have to remove this mutated dna or else i will produce this mutated dna for millions and millions of cells yes it should not happen for that we have g1 to s checkpoint s phase then it will progress to g2 phase g2 further progress to m phase here we have g2 bar m checkpoint again he will be here we will see whether there is any damaged or any unduplicated dna fine yes so these are the significance of checkpoint what is the significance of checkpoint they will stop for a while stop for a while in the sense not in reality yes they will have a check by themselves okay yes and they will see okay whether everything is okay if it is okay it will produce uh, what a uh, new cells suppose if there is a problem in this checkpoint what will happen the mutated dna itself will get transferred to many and many and more and more and more generation that is again one of the cause for causing cancer fine yes so this cell cycle is a very complex phenomenon it is regulated by various activators and inhibitors these activators are called as cell or cyclin dependent kinases and inhibitors are called as cyclin dependent kinases inhibitors okay yes we have lot of activators and inhibitors we have lot of activators and inhibitors you should know what are the activators and what are the inhibitors okay yes fine fine let us focus this picture this may, they may ask one mcq question you will get from this focus on this g1 phase s phase g2 m phase next g1 this is the normal cell cycle this is the normal cell cycle fine first let us see what are the cyclin dependent kinases or activators these are this set no this complete set 
these are activators and these groups are inhibitors fine yes okay so remember like this what is the sequence g1 s g2 m now i am going to tell you in what phase what are the activators what in which phase okay in, or each phase i am going to tell what are the activators and the inhibitors g1 s g2 m remember in this sequence only fine or else you will get confused okay fine just remember this as a phone number okay yes one second okay from g1 to s phase from g1 to s phase g1 to s phase we have cdk4 that is cyclin dependent kinase 4 and cyclin dependent kinase 6 4 6 from s to g2 we have cdk2 cdk1 and here again we have cdk1 okay yes this cdk and cdk6 k4 and k6 they are under cd a family that is cyclin sorry uh, they are under cyclin d family they are under cyclin d family 2 and 1 are under cyclin a family finally 1 is under cyclin b family cyclin b family if you don't understand no problem i will write it again g1 yes g2 m remember here 4 6 2 1 1 that means what cdk4 cdk6 cdk2 cdk1 cdk1 okay and remember dab d a b that means this belong to cyclin d family cyclin a family cyclin b family okay in this single table in this single table you can remember the whole activators of cell cycle any questions any questions okay d a b dab four six two one one remember as a phone number but what is the order g1 yes g2 m if you reverse the order no everything will go wrong fine now we will see what are the inhibitors now we will see what are the inhibitors fine yes in each phase we are going to see what are the inhibitors in each phase we are going to see what are the inhibitors it is very easy inhibitors no it is very easy inhibitors it is very easy okay inhibitors only in the first phase only in the first phase we have only in the first phase i am going to say the say the inhibitors we have p 15 we have p15 p16 p18 and one more thing p19 these are the inhibitors name they are the cyclin dependent kinase inhibitor cdki these are the names of those inhibitor 15 16 18 19 in rest all phases the inhibitors are ec p21 p27 p57 okay p27 p57 and 21 i hope it is very clear for you i hope it is very clear for you yes okay one second let us draw this again let us put this again in a table okay so one second i am telling g1 yes g2m what are the act activators 4 6 2 1 1 d a b dab inhibitors first phase 15 16 18 19 rest of all phase 21 27 57 i hope it is very clear for you yes that finishes the complete picture if you know this you can write anything just draw this picture just label it that's enough for a short mark question what are stem cells for a stem if we if we want to call uh, some group of cells a stem cell it should have two property one is self renewal another one is asymmetric division 
we have different types of stem cells one is called as totipotent cells totipotent cell means the cells which can give rise to every cell in the body cells which can give rise to every cell in the body we call it as totipotent stem cell see this is a single picture the zygote is called as a totipotent stem cells okay then we have pluripotent stem cells they are going to give only some they can't give all the that is totipotent means it can form all the three germ layers whereas pluripotent stem cells mean they can't form all the three germ layers you can see uh, they can form only what some specific groups for example they may form only hepatocyte they may form only neurons they may form only cardiomyocytes they may form only hematopoietic cells they may form only the pancreatic cells they are called as pluripotent cells okay their fate is already fixed okay yes <laughs> you know you have learned in physiology what is that pluripotent hematopoietic stem cells why we are using pluripotent hematopoietic stem cell because that stem cells can only give rise to hematopoietic cell precursor that is why pre pluripotent it can the uh, pluripotent hematopoietic stem cells it can't form liver it can't form neurons it can't form muscles that is why it is called pluripotent okay that is what we call as pluripotent okay i hope that uh, terminology is very clear for you yes okay and multipotent multipotent means what it is again still more specific multipotent means it is still more specific for example muscle cells myocytes they can form either only smooth muscle or our voluntary muscle or the cardiac muscle they can't form neurons or some other things they are again a subset of pluripotent stem cells fine yes so uh, that is the important point you have to uh, remember and there are some places in our body where this stem cells are present stem cells are present in our body even you in your body also that is in adults also we have some areas okay they are called as protected within some special environmental specialized tissue micro environment and this is what we call the stem cell nikes what where are they number one number one hair follicles in the bulge of the hair follicles we have stem cells limbus of the cornea what is limbus sclerocorneal junction the point where the sclera and the sclera and cornea meets we call it as the limbus there we have the stem cells number 3 crypts of libercund you know the crypts of the gut we have stem cells number 4 the herring's canal in the liver we have stem cells subventricular zone in the brain we have stem cells so these are the five regions in our body where the stem cells are present one mcq must one mcq must from this topic okay one mcq must from this topic fine yes so uh, see you can see the various uh, what is the importance of this uh, stem cells okay i will tell you see you can see you know the example see crypt and you can see the canal of herrings you can see the bulge hair follicle bulge okay go through those pictures fine yes and uh, we have something what we call it as uh, why why we should uh, know about this stem cells we have stem cells transplantation bone marrow transplantation we have of course bone marrow has a lot of stem cells so bone marrow transplantations uh, what as uh, uh, are, are there and we have something called as ips cell this is an update recent update in the 10th edition of robins 9th edition it is not mentioned in 10th edition of robins they have mentioned what is induced pluripotent stem cells what is induced pluripotent stem cells when the genes which you know the stem cells are again produced by some genes when the genes which produce that stem cells when they are introduced into some fully differentiated cell what do you mean by fully differentiated cell the cell cannot divide further or like the cell cannot form an other cell for example a neuron the neuron can only produce a neuron or a muscle cell can only produce a muscle it can't produce some other cell that is why it is called as a fully differentiated cell okay and when the genes which produce the stem cells are introduced in a fully differentiated cells we have something called as ips that is induced pluripotent stem cells induced pluripotent stem cells okay just remember what is ips induced pluripotent stem cells when we are introducing the genes of the stem cells into some fully differentiated cells we get something what we call as induced pluripotent stem cells or what we call it as ips i hope it is clear for you ips induced pluripotent stem cells okay so with that okay with that we have come to the conclusion thank you 
okay we have come to the conclusions of uh, the part 2 okay that finishes the first chapter in robins we have successfully completed the first chapter okay just remember here okay the importance of knowing about the concept of stem cells is bmt or bone marrow transplantation fine and we have seen where are the uh, stem cells present okay just focus on this table okay these two tables you can understand the inhibitors and activators of cell cycle and one another one first table know what are the receptors with this examples okay yes Thank you.